bring on my first uh, single family case study presenter tonight. Jim, are you with us? I'm here. Hi, Jim. Welcome. How are you today? Doing great. Good, good. So perfect. So we have Jim and Laura. They live in Houston and they have invested in Houston. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, how did you hear about us and how come you decided to join? Well, I joined uh, Lifestyles in about 2012. My wife had heard it on the radio and said, hey, you should check this out. So I've been talking about real estate since I graduated college almost 30 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I got out of college and back then, you know, information wasn't as freely available. And I didn't, there was a lot of stuff I really liked about being a landlord and I really wanted to do it, but I just didn't have the answers. And then on top of that, I graduated, I got a good job and kind of put it to the side. Well, fast forward to 2012, I found Lifestyles, I joined it. And after I took the first uh, two day class, I couldn't stop smiling for about two weeks straight. <laughs> Great. Um, Dell was able to answer every single question I had and more, and I was hooked after that point. But then I led a good life, get in the way of a great life, and I invested in a couple of part or single family. Then I sold those in both invested as a passive in a multifamily, and then kind of put it to the side. And work got in the way of you know investing. Mm -hmm. Well, fast forward to about a year ago and my dream slash nightmare came true and I was let go after 21 years at Caterpillar. Uh, so the reason why it was always a dream of mine is because I had all this money sitting away stuck in 401k and I hadn't, I couldn't use it. And Dell always said, well, quit your job and pull it out. I was too chicken. And so I was waiting for a kick in the butt and last year was that kick in the butt. So I decided to go ahead and just jump in the deep end and become a full-time real estate investor. Wow, okay, that's a great story. So way back when you joined, did you have any experience going into buying rental properties or anything like that? Not at all. Not at all, okay, perfect, perfect. And how many houses did you buy the first time around and how many houses did you buy now the second time around? So the first time I owned two, uh, and then I sold those to get into a multi multi-family, which I'm still a part of today. Yeah. And um, right now, uh, in about last September or so, I started buying again, yeah. and I'm trying to get uh, 12 proper or nine properties within uh, 10 months. So, oh, nice. and I am more than halfway there right now. I own five, uh, four are rented out, and one of them is under rehab right now. Perfect. And tonight we are talking about Hartsville. So tell us a little bit, how did you find this house? Uh, what did you like about it? Uh, so this was um, the first house that I actually got a renter into, although it was the third house I had bought uh, because of some issues with the title work on the couple other houses. They took a lot longer to actually get to closing. This one was almost immediate. It was actually a flip that someone got about 90% done with and ran out of money. So okay. Jeff Jenkins, who is a Lifestyles Realtor, was my realtor at the time and he brought this deal to me. Okay, perfect. And and where is it located? Uh, this is roughly uh, 288 and 610 on the south side. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let's start to the next picture, please. So as you said, you bought this as a flip. So was this the way it looked when you bought it? Yeah, so this was, the inside was almost complete. I did a little switcheroo with some of the, like where the uh, washer and dryer hookups were yeah. and a few minor things, but most of the work was outside. Okay, so what so did you do outside? So outside, if you go to the next picture, excuse me. Um, yeah. This this location is not ideal not an ideal location. It's right off of Cullen um, Boulevard, which is a very busy street um, through that part of the neighborhood. 
and it's very industrial and it's it's not pretty let's put it that way uh so if you see on the before picture there's an industrial building right next to it they had razor barbed wire all over it and uh, uh it just didn't look very pretty so what i did was invested in a nice privacy fence all the way around the back um it might have been a little overkill but it made it really easy to rent okay Perfect. And what, so also, you did the outside, did you do any other rehab to the house? Yes, we painted it as well. That was in the first picture that you showed. Yeah. yeah. Painted that cool blue color with the red. I love that blue color and the red door. <laughs> yes, it's, it's really nice. There was some other uh, old fencing that we took down around the front of it. Um, did a little few things here and there. So it really wasn't that much that we had to do. Okay, cool. How long did the rehab take? It took three weeks. Three weeks, okay. And did you? It was you said it was a busy street outside. So did you put a yard, a sign yard in the front? Did you get a lot of of calls on that, or how long did it take before you got a tenant in place? Yeah, so that's a that's a that's a good story. Um, <laughs> I uh, put a I actually use a, a property management company to lease because um, I don't want to deal with that. Honestly, um, it's not for me. But um, I did put a sign out front, you know, with the property management company uh, number on it, and they got flooded with calls. Yeah. And that was before we even had it on HAR or on anything else. Okay. Um, in fact, anytime I was there to, let's say, just check up on it, I'd yeah. always have a couple people stop by looking at it, asking questions. Um, people were actually trying to sell me their house. So <laughs> it, it actually worked out really well yeah nice yeah that's that's the great part about a busy road right you have yes. a lot of drive-by traffic yeah yes okay and, it's, and the, the the best part about this was is is um a couple blocks away from the uh, uh, uh i think the middle school mm -hmm. in that area so it got a ton of traffic nice perfect okay so let's take a look at the numbers so uh, you bought this house for ninety two thousand dollars it appraised at 125 that left you with an equity of 33,000. It was a rehab just under 14,000, and you have closing costs just over 8,000. That left you with a net equity on 10,709. Your cash out of pocket was 32,400, and that is a return on gain on 33%. Um, you have a rent at 1275, five. 15,300 a year and the cash flow and for our new people out there cash flow is what Jim get in his pocket each and every month when the insurance and taxes and loan balance is paid is an amazing $600 uh, that is awesome that is $7,220 a year and it is a cash on cash return investment on 22 percent on an almost finished house i say that is a very good job congratulations jim thank you so these numbers were they similar to what the numbers looked like when you were presented this bill this deal by um, your agent yeah it was pretty close to what we had predicted originally i yeah. actually went quite a bit over on the rehab cost just to, to make it a little more marketable. Yeah. Um, but it, for the most part, it stuck to what we figured out in Quest at the beginning. Perfect, perfect. Yes, David. I'm upset. I did a speech saying houses make two to $500 and he goes make 600 wrecks my speech. I know, <laughs> I know. This oh, is an amazing you know, overachiever. Yeah. Well, Dave, wait, wait for the house I'm working on right now that'll make you even more of a liar <laughs> oh really because if it's over six hundred dollars you know what the technical term for that is in the industry what pee in your pants exciting yeah. oh yeah it is yeah. <laughs> my pants are a little warm right now. But, but jim compare this to remember when you were working for caterpillar right yeah uh, how do you get the saddles on those little caterpillars <laughs> it's difficult um, yeah. So, but but when you work with Caterpillar and you're investing your stock and all that stuff, were your returns even close to this 20, 22 percent a year tax-free income? Nowhere close. Do you wish you did this earlier? Hell yeah. 
And in fact, I wish I, I didn't. I wish I didn't. My <laughs> seminar, because I know you came a long time ago in Dell's, and he probably didn't teach you about a quadro because he didn't know about quadros back then. And I started teaching about quadros. Are you married, Jim? Yes, I am. Do you know you could have took your entire 401k, moved it to your wife 10 years ago, and got all your money? I did not know that. No. Not pay the 10% penalty? Didn't know that either. Yeah, see, that's why you got to come back this summer at least once a year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but for you folks listening tonight, Jim could have sped this up a lot. You don't have to wait till you quit your job. You can get all your 401k now. I'll teach you how to do that this weekend. So, yeah. Yeah. Great point. Awesome. So let, let's go on. Yes. So, who's on your team? So, the mentor I mainly interfaced with, with, with was uh, Doug Butler. Uh, my realtor for most of my deals was Jeff Jenkins. Uh, Jennifer McCormick helped me out on one as well. Yeah. Uh, my lender, for the most part, on the the uh, hard money was uh, Catalyst, um, and then Security National Mortgage was my um, conventional lender for all of them. Yes. And then for this deal in particular, it was All Star Construction. Perfect. Perfect. And as you all remember, guys, way back when Monique was on. This is a part of our vendor program team. So Jim had put his team in place and, and had that ready to go when he started out to helping him out on this deal. Okay, yeah. so. I'd like to throw something in on that, um, especially after the storm that we had. Um, yeah. It's really important to have great relationships with your contractors. I leaned on two of my, con or three of my contractors um, really heavily to help me get some uh, pipe burst fixed and, yeah. and very quickly. So um, it's it's important to, to find the people you trust and you like and have yeah. a good relationship with them because they can really help you out if you need it. Yeah, yeah. And it's also a great way to utilize your membership and build that team to have ready. So that's a good point of view. Okay, so how has Lifestyles Unlimited changed your life? Well, uh, like David said at the beginning, it's it's given me time back. Um, I didn't realize until I got laid off how much I actually was spending at work or working mm -hmm. or traveling. And now that I'm doing this full time and I'm starting to replace my income, yeah. um, I'm actually kind of bored, honestly. I, I get a little bored and I can see my wife getting jealous. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> she's here. <laughs> Um, but you know, it, it's given me more time for being at home, you know, being with her, um, yeah. time for my hobbies, which I really had no time for. Um, oh, yeah. so I got time now. And, yeah. uh, so my next steps here after this is, um, I'm going to get my nine properties that Fannie Mae will allow me to have. And yeah. then I'm going to reevaluate whether I want to become a lead investor or just invest passively. So yeah. into multifamily. Yeah, you can change slide, please, David. Thank you. Okay, so uh, perfect. So you said you were going to buy nine single family houses within how many months did you say? I wanted to do it within 10 mm -hmm. and I, I'm pretty, I've already got five. I've got four more to go and I think I can have those done fairly quickly. So, so it'll you're be- going to get there. Well, I I'll like it. There, yeah. I like it. Okay. Yeah. So for people sitting out there right now, what would be, and kind of hesitating, a little bit fear in there, what would you say to them? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? So for people sitting now kind of wondering if they can do this, it sounds very complicated. What would you say to a person that kind of want, or trying to decide if this is for them? What would be your advice to them? My advice would be to lean heavily on your team. Um, they're all experts. They know what they're doing. Listen to what they say. Um, and the, the mentors do a great job. Lean heavily on them. Listen to what they say. And they'll make it easy. And the nice thing is when you use vendors that are um, part of the Lifestyles team, they all know the Lifestyles model. They know how it should operate. They know how to give you advice based on that. And that's especially helpful with lenders. If you're using the, the lifestyle sponsored lenders, 
they know the terminology, they understand the case studies and how we do our numbers, yeah. and they help you run through that and, and walk you through hand by hand. Uh, over my past years, I've moved quite a bit, and I've bought over probably 15 houses, just you know where I've lived and moved and stuff like that. Yeah. So I always forget steps in the buying process, and mm -hmm. I rely on my realtor to say, hey, this is now when you do this and this, and yeah. this is what this means. So, yeah. Okay. Perfect. So, we're going to open up for questions. All right. That is perfect. I uh, do have a couple questions for you, Jim, as well as one for you, David, if you've got a minute. So, first for Jim from Agnes. She's asking, being unemployed, did you have a hard time with the loan? No. That's because I have money bags sitting right here. <laughs> <laughs> sugar mama sugar mama sugar mama that's exactly right yeah. i'm not ashamed of it <laughs> I, I the same thing jim so i get it that's how i started karen was my sugar mama so yeah nice. yeah no nice. that is a problem with getting a fannie mae loan is that they do look at your w-2 income and right now i have zero uh yeah. so i'm getting the maximum number that we can have in laura's name and really i I can't do much in my name. So that's why I'm kind of stopping at nine houses. And but it, it puts us in a great position anyways, so that I can start, you know, I get the income there. I we can live still and then I can start focusing on multifamily. And for no, some people that might be a situation where, well, me and my wife both don't have an income. We can't do this. No. That's right. why I really want you to come to seminar. There's lots of ways of doing this. You don't have to have jobs because in multifamily is what's called a passive investor. I'll teach you about that later tonight. You're going to hear about that. You could put 25, 50K, 100K into a deal, no job, no background checks, and nothing, and make great rate of returns. So there's lots of different ways to invest. So sometimes when you hear something like, well, if I didn't have a job, I couldn't buy it, that's single family. Single family, yes, you do have to have an income. I just want to make sure new people out there don't turn this off all of a sudden because, like, well, I got a half million to work with, but guess I can't do it. No, you just go to multifamily. So I just want people to understand it. No, that's perfect. And 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 having your wife partner in that with you as a power couple, man, that's the way to go. So yeah, nice. yeah. Good, good deal. Okay, one more question for you, Jim. Uh, did you consider the hard money uh, before the rehab? And what's the reason you didn't use the hard money? And he's asking, is that because the equity after the rehab was expected to be low? I did use a hard money for that, for this deal. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. So did you use hard money? Say again. I just want to make sure you did use hard money, correct, Jim? Yes. I did. Yeah, yes. and I believe this was an off-market property, right, Jim? Perfect. Perfect. So and for the new folks, I got to explain this because new folks listening, like, what the heck's hard money? My money's all soft. It's it's flaccid. It's paper. No, what hard money means? It's a specialized lender, and I'll teach you this this weekend. You're gonna hear a lot of terms tonight that sound like Greek when you're new, and I break it down to a third grade level so even I can understand it. So. What it means is there's specialized lenders. They'll lend you the money not just to buy the property, but all the rehab. They'll lend you the money for that as well. A regular bank won't do that. That's what a hard money lender or a private money lender is called, just so you know if you're new. Okay. Perfect. Thanks, David. Um, and specifically for you, David, I think you may be able to explain this a little bit better. But Felicia is asking if you can explain the 401k and how the Quadro moves that to your wife. Okay, there's something called a quadro. What it is, we have a vendor named Henry Novak. And what Henry Novak can do is, it only works if you're married. Let's say you work at, you know, Holt, you know, Caterpillar. Is Holt Caterpillar the same company? Yeah, they're a dealership. Oh, okay, I don't know the difference. Well, anyways, you work at Holt Caterpillar and your wife works at uh, Kabasa over here, right? You, Kabata. You can literally move all your money from your 401k to this spouse, and they can move all their money to this spouse with something called a quadro. And guess what? If you do that, there's not the 10% penalty. And there's not the cap. It's normally you're allowed to pull out of a 401k, 50,000 or 50%, whichever is less. None of those rules because your spouse doesn't work for the company. So therefore, he can take his 300k, move it from him to his wife, and she can get all that money. Now, I'll explain it much more in detail when you come to my seminar this weekend. I'm just giving you the five-second version right now so you can get a little idea about it. You're like, wow, that sounds cool. They didn't teach me that in school. I know. School teaches you crap how to 
diagram a sentence in about a parallelogram, which you never use again. But I'm going to teach you stuff how to make you wealthy. You decide which is better. Perfect. Thank you guys very much for the answers. Great questions. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. So, Jim, I want to thank you for coming on tonight. I'm looking forward to hear about the rest of your houses. And thank you for giving back.